Sheila, can you find and make an appointment for our panels for forum live this Monday? Okay, sir, sure, I will find them. I want three panels, and uh, if most of them are lecturers, it will be great. Alright, sir, I will find the detail about that. Okay, I will meet you. Pieces of peace in the sun's peace of mind. I know it's hard sometimes. Hello, Assalamualaikum. Can I speak with Mr. Mas Rizan? Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yes, I am Mas Rizan. Can I have you? Hi, Mr. Mas Rizan. I'm Nabila, Head of Program of Forum Life in TV5. So, I would like to invite you come on on our program. Oh, yeah, okay. I am free. But where and what time did you want meet me, Mr. Namila? Okay, we meet at Country Garden at 3 p.m. this Sunday. Okay. See you later. Come on, come. But it's fun to fantasize. All my enemies who wouldn't wish who I was. But it's fun to fantasize. Oh, oh. Hello, Assalamualaikum. Can I speak with Miss Fatin? Yes, Waalaikumsalam. Uh, Fatin speaking. What can I help you? Hi, Miss Fatin. I'm Nabila, Head of Program of Forum Life in TV5. So, I would like to invite you to come on our program. Okay, we meet at Country Garden at 3 p.m. this Sunday. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. See you later. Get my time on my right oh, 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 I'm falling So I'm taking my time on my right Hello, Assalamualaikum Can I speak with Miss Farzana? Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, Yes, this is Farzana speaking um, Yeah, can I help you? Hi Miss Farzana, I'm Nabila, Head of Program of Forum Life in TV5. So I would like to invite you to join our Forum Life program. Um, yeah, sure, okay. Um, can you tell me where we can meet and at what time? Um, I think Forest City is the best place to meet. So we meet at Forest City 4 p.m. this Sunday. Yeah, okay. See you later. Bye. How are you? I'm fine, Miss Samila. So, what you want to ask me? I want to ask you about your career, position, and your experience in your job. Sure, Miss Samila. Actually, I am a lecturer at UITM Sugamat. So, my favorite subject is Islamic economy. Oh, great! Because uh, from our life, we want to know about uh, Security Commission and Sharia Advisory Council. Oh sure. When you want to invite me to program will be live? Uh, our program will be live at Sunday 8 pm. Sure, I will come to the program live at TV5. Thank you, Mr. Masrizan. Welcome. Actually, I want to ask you about your career, position, and your experience in your job. Oh, sure, Miss Nabila. Uh, I'm, a, a, I'm a lecturer at Pasir Gudang, uh, UITM Pasir Gudang. So, my favorite subject is uh, investment and more to Islamic capital market. Oh, great. Because from our 
live uh, we want to discuss about SC Security Commission and SAC Sharia and Advisory Council oh sure so when the program will be live uh, this Sunday at 8 p.m. okay sure I will come to your program thank you How are you, Miss? Um, I'm fine, thank you. So, what's the what's the important thing that you want to discuss? Actually, I want to ask you about your career, your position, and your experience in your job. Um, yeah, sure. So, um, I am a lecturer at IIUM, and my favorite subject is investment. So, like, uh, I'm more to investment and Islamic financial system. Oh, great! Because from our life, we want to discuss more about Islamic capital market. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, when the TV, the TV program will be held? Uh, this Sunday at 8 p.m. Um, okay, I will definitely come to your TV show. Thank you. Today we would like to discuss about regulation and supervision of Islamic capital market. This is our panel, Ms. Fatim from uh, UITM Pasir Buda. Next is uh, Ms. Warzana from lecture from IIM. And lastly, uh, Mr. Maslizan from uh, UITM Selamat. This represents a more experience that we would like to discuss, which is uh, regulation and supervision of Islamic capital market. I am pretty sure I am not the only one. People out there also do not clear about the purpose of uh, Islamic capital market meeting Sharia requirement. Maybe Ms. Fatin can clearly explain about this? Uh, sure, Ms. Nabila. First of all, thank you for inviting me. So, uh, the purpose is protecting the interest depositor and investment account holder for Islamic capital for IAH to expert protection and transparency from the Islamic financial system in the of the features of the contract they are entered into. Um, the second one that I can add is ensuring compliance with Sharia. Uh, Islamic financial institutions are prohibited from recognizing as profits and income derived from transactions that do not comply with the Sharia the next. Yes, right, Ms. Fazana. The conduct of financial transaction of Islamic financial system uh, in compliance with the Sharia rules and principle has become an important element for instilling public confidence. First of all, thank you, Ms. Navila, for inviting me. The third one, let me explain. Supporting the integration of Islamic financial institution in the international financial system. Islamic finance has evolved into a valuable and competitive component of the international financial system. It is expected that globalization is changed, especially in the form of Islamic financial institutional participation. Thank you for letting me know a little bit about the principle and purpose uh, about Islamic capital market. Before we take a break, Let's watch the video that we have prepared about the purpose and principle of Islamic capital market. We will be right back after the break. Bursa Malaysia was established in 1973 and listed in 2005. It hosts over 900 companies across 60 economic activities. Bursa Malaysia offers a good breadth of investment securities that are listed on the main and ACE market. Bursa Malaysia offers a broad spectrum of products, including equities, derivatives, Islamic and offshore. Malaysian Islamic capital market has generated considerable growth momentum over the last few years and Bursa Malaysia's intention is to promote Sharia-compliant offerings as an alternative to conventional. More than 70% of companies listed on Bursa Malaysia are Sharia-compliant. 
These Sharia compliant companies prohibit activities in collection of interest or riba, contractual uncertainty or gara, gambling or maiseer, and other non permissible activities. Kini kumpulkan 13 puzzle 3 di Upin dan Ipin dengan pack promo Mami Monster. I'm sure that people at home wants to know about the list of syariah governing principle of syariah capital market instrument. Uh, can anyone explain it? Maybe Miss Fatih? Sure, Miss Nadila. Okay, what I know, the purpose is provision of riba. Okay, riba means the expansion and increase. The charging and the receiver of interest riba is strictly forbidden. Okay, when the investor are more constant and with rate of the interest and guaranteed return, then they are with the use it with money is put, the result can only be negative. Uh, the second one is provision of riba. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, for Gara. Gara implies risk, uncertainty and hazard. The occurrence of Gara in any transaction may result in oppression or injustice and the loss of properties to one or even both of the parties. Um, the outcome of the transaction is not clear to the parties due to the lack of information, thus exposing them to unnecessary risk in this transaction. The outcome of the transaction is not clear to the parties due to the lack of information, thus exposing them to unnecessary risk in this transaction. The third one, let me explain. Prohibition of my say also known as Kima. Kima is defined as activity which involves betting whereby the winner will take the entire bid and the loser will lose his bet. It means game of pure chance whereby any party might gain at the expenses of the loss of other party. Mutility of risk sharing is also the principle. It is an established principle in Islamic commercial law that risk common share with the return. But what the example? Okay, uh, for the example, in the contract of Mudaraba, the capital provider has the right to profit as he is also bearing the risk of loss in the business venture. Next, governance and transparency. Sharia governance should have Sharia advisory. Uh, which require them to setting up of a clear and comprehensive framework. Uh, what is the transparency? On the issue of transparency, Islamic financial institution must able and adhere to the same regulatory requirement when it comes to the issue of disclosure. Um, and the last one is about ethical standards. When Muslims invest their money, in something, it is their religious duty to ensure that what they invest in is good and wholesome. Saya sebaga. Oh, mak kau meletup. Mak. Dek, pagi-pagi dah banyak pokok. Batal kuasa mak nanti. Bukan, ayah. Ada nak sama kanak kucing. Tak. Ada nak halal burung gagak. Tak. Ada nak ambil bah untuk mak. Kenapa balik basah-basah ni? Ha, ni mesti mandi sungai kan? Bukan, tadi hujan lebat. Pergi masuk bilik. Eh, Stella tipu, dosa tau. Alah, Rai nanti. Ali minta maaf. Alah. Cakap ayah, jangan bagi anak yang keluar. Adik! Tak, ayah yang tu gelap sebab dia selalu sekemewa panas.
Astagfirullahaladzim. Aduh. Maaf saya. Adik tak biar minta maaf kan adik nak minta maaf. Itu yang kita tahu. Yang kita dan adik tak tahu. Kosong-kosongnya ya. Eh, minta maaf betul-betul lah semua kesalahan adik. Alah, kalau macam itu sampai esok pun tak habis. <tuk> Tangan dihulur, tanda kemaafan. Keampunan diberi, nilai hey, muni disemai. So, let's continue discussing about revelation and supervision of Islamic capital market. So, about the regulation and supervision body capital market from what I remember is divided to into two which is Security Commission NC and Sharia Adversary Council SAC. Yes, that's right Ms. Nabila. The Security Commission is statutory body set up under the Security Commission Act 1993. Reporting directly to the Minister on Finance. It is a regulatory body for the regulation and development of the capital market in Malaysia. Okay, Security Commission responsible for the regulation and supervision of the activity of market institution, including the stock exchange, clearing house, and monitoring of license under the Securities Industry Act 1983 (SIA) and Future Industry Act 1993 (FIA). How about the role of Security Commission? Oh, there are so many roles of Security Commission which are supervised exchanges, clearing house and central depositors, a growing authority for corporate bond issues, registering authority for prospectus of cooperating and unlisted recreational club regulating all matters relating to securities and derivative contract. Mr. Masrizan? Actually, regulating the tech over and merger of company, licensing and supervisory all licensed person and lastly encouraging safe regulation. Oops, um, there are one more which is ensuring proper conduct of market institutions and licensed persons. So before we take a break, let's watch the video that was prepared about the security commission. Anda ingin menjadi kaya, tetapi awas. Terdapat banyak skim-skim pelaburan tidak sah di pasaran. Jika ragu-ragu, anda boleh jumpa kami untuk memahami formula TIPU. Apa itu TIPU? T tidak akan rugi. I indah kabar dari rupa. P peluang hanya sekali. U untung besar. Ingat dan berwaspada dengan formula TIPU ini. Untuk sebarang pertanyaan mengenai pasaran modal, anda boleh hubungi kami. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, I'm Professor Dr. Muhammad Akram Laldin and currently I am the Chairman of the Shariah Advisory Committee of the Employee Provident Fund or EPF. Now, uh, regarding the role of the Shariah Advisory Committee of uh, EPF, uh, basically, I mean, we have a very great responsibility to ensure that and ascertain that all the activities as well as I mean the investment and how the savings are being managed or the simpanan syariah is being managed is in line with the requirement of uh, syariah. I mean this is of course I mean to ensure that whatever return uh, that will be obtained through the saving is also in line with the uh, requirement of syariah. I mean, it is also the responsibility of the Sharia Advisory Committee of uh, Sipad and Sharia to advise uh, the board and also investment panel of uh, EPF on matters related to Sharia. If there is any Sharia concerns uh, regarding Sipad and Sharia, so it is also the responsibility uh, to highlight this uh, to the board and also investment panel so that uh, to ensure that everything will be in line with the requirement of Sharia and whatever return that is obtained from all the investment, all the activities is also in line with the requirement of Sharia. Okay, the topic that I want to know about is Sharia Adversary Council is actually who and 
What the function Miss Fatih? Okay, the Shariah Advisory Council is responsible to advise on matters pertaining to the Islamic capital market. The members of Shariah Advisory Council are qualified individuals who can present Shariah opinions and have vast experience in banking, finance, economy, law, and application of Shariah. Okay, how about the role of Shariah Advisory Council, uh, Miss Fazana? Okay, so basically, the role of Sharia Advisory Council is development facilities and regulations of new product. And also, market provides greater clarity and enhanced market confidence, integrity through dissemination of Sharia ruling. Oh, good, Ms. Fazana. In addition, Sharia Advisory Council, SAC, is also regular interaction with industry and other Sharia Expert provide useful feedback for decision making. Have a break. Have, Have a kick care. Hotel kegemaran saya di London semestinya Hotel Matima. Tapi sejak menemui Trivago, saya tanya diri sendiri, kenapa tak bandingkan harga sebelum ini? Mudah sekali. Hotel Trivago. Hi, uh, sorry for this step. I am from TV5, so I come here to. Uh, I want to ask you all about uh, what's your opinion in IIFM. Um, for my opinion, my opinion is IIFM is a standard setting bodies uh, of the Islamic financial service industry. How about you? Okay, from my opinion, IIFM also contributes in creating industry awareness by organizing specialized seminar and workshop as well as publishing research report okay how about you in my opinion IIFM is supported by other jurisdictional members such as State Bank of Pakistan uh, thank you for your time okay so there are the opinion from people out there so uh, how about opinion from our opinion maybe Miss Fatih uh, okay sure okay uh, international Islamic body Yeah, that's true, Miss Fatih. The Malaysia International Islamic Financial Center, um, MIFC, initiative was launched in 2006 to develop Malaysia as an international marketplace for Islamic finance. Uh, oh yeah, where are you now? Uh, the Malaysia International Islamic Finance Center initiative offers a community network of the country is the financial center regulated, including uh, Bank Negara Malaysia, BNM, which is Center Bank of Malaysia, Security Commission and Malaysia. Uh, in addition, industry participation from the banking, Takaful, Ali Takaful, Capital Market Institution, Human Capital Development Institution, and Professional Ancillary Service Company, which are participating and working collaboratively in Islamic finance. Yeah, don't miss. Malaysia welcome industry practitioner to conduct international business Islamic finance while enjoying acting for the same reason. The second point is International Islamic Finance Market, which is uh, IIFM. It's a standard setting body of the Islamic Financial Service Industry, IFISL. Can you, Ms. Fatin, explain more about this topic? Uh, yes, sure. Uh, so, International Islamic Financial Market focusing on standardization of Islamic financial contract and product template relating to the capital and money market. International Islamic financial market play its role in market unification by developing best practices at the global level and achieving Sharia harmonization through effort for creation of a robust, transparent, and efficient Islamic finance industry. Um, international Islamic financial market also contributes in creating industry awareness by organizing specialized seminars and workshops as well as publishing research reports. Yes, from our research, International Islamic Finance Market was founded in 2002 by the collective effort of the Islamic Development Bank. 
That's true. International Islamic financial market is also supported by certain regulatory and government bodies such as Indonesia Financial Service Authority. Um, yes, I agree with Ms. Patin. Uh, International Islamic financial market was formed under Amiri Decree No. 22, date 2002 as a non-profit organization. Okay, thank you to all our panelists, uh, Ms. Fatih, Ms. Farzana and Mr. Masrizan. Now I'm sure that people at home and include me more understand about Islamic capital market. Thank you for all the watching this video. Before ending our live program, please enjoy the performance from our guest artist. Thank you for inviting us. I'm